So, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, today, inshallah, we have a very, very interesting program that I think you will really, really appreciate. We're going to talk about some very important issues. Um, today's discussion, if I can just move this over a little bit, um, today's discussion will be about something very important. What is the link between Ghazwatul Hind, number two, Ghazwatul Sind, and the Yakhrujuna min al Khurasani Rayatul Sud? and the black flags that will come out of Khurasan. So today's discussion will, you know, without today's discussion, things won't be exactly clear. And I think there's a lot of misinformation at many different levels about Ghazwatul Hind. And so I want to clarify a lot of those issues. But there's a lot of other issues that are very technical and historical, which I'm not going to go into today. So point we're going to learn about five different things. Number one, Khurasan and Ghazwatul Hind being used to manufacture conflict, being used as a uh, as like a beehive, uh, trying to create a situation where to get people together, because people will see certain things and 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 react to it. So being used to manufacture conflict and prepare a trap for Muslims. So this is the first thing I'm going to talk about. And you'll be quite surprised about the type of things the think tanks are doing and saying, like Robert Spencer, if you don't know about him. So, the second thing we're going to talk about is Ghazwatul Hind. Where, when does this happen? When does Ghazwatul Hind happen exactly? And then number three, with that, many of the ahadiths don't only mention Ghazwatul Hind only, but some of the narrations also mention Ghazwatul Sind. And Sind meaning the area of Pakistan. So how does this play into this? Who will send an army to send? And how will this happen? Khuras and then and then of course Khurasan, how does Khurasan fit into all of this? Who will send forces to send and why? That's number five. Okay, so let us get it started, inshallah. <clears throat> Bismillah rahman rahim uh, let's see if I can make this bigger. Okay. Ghazwatul uh, Hind. Is only India threatened by, by the idea? Because India is threatened. Okay. And people are writing about this. Okay. And uh, so just to give you an example. This is just a normal newspaper. But the Observer Research Foundation. If U.S. troops exit Kabul. And the Taliban holds sway. And by the way, uh, I figured out what Trump's plan is for leave, making the Trump, uh, the armies leave. The armies going back will make American people happy, but he's going to replace it with private armies, mercenary armies, who charge the government ten times more than the army does. So it's to make the rich people richer, the, the big companies bigger, and at the same time, to make the people at home feel happier that he brought back the armies. So, um, my previous analysis may not have been 100% correct about this. This guy, Hussein Haqqani, who was an ambassador to Pakistan, is write, writing for the Hudson Institute um, about this same topic. The Hudson Institute. Prophecy and the Jihad in the Indian Subcontinent, Hussein Haqqani used to be an ambassador and is now uh, writing for these uh, think tanks that uh, have agendas of their own. The Hudson Institute Senior Fellow and Director for South and Central Asia, Ambassador Hassan, Hassan Haqqani served as Pakistan's ambassador to the United States from 2008 to 2011. What is this guy doing writing for these institutes about topics which he really has no knowledge about? I mean, it's ridiculous, you know? Uh, let me move this here now. Ghazwatul Hind, a matter of faith. Jihad Watch. This is a website run by Robert Spencer, which is another, which is another think tank. Um, let me just. Uh, which is another think tank.
So Ghazwatul Hind, a matter of faith, Robert Spencer. Okay. So the point is, they have their eyes on these sayings of the Prophet. And they are beginning to think about how we can set traps. And then you also have amongst Muslims, people like this guy, Pakistani Jihad war cry of Ghazwatul Hind is entirely based on concocted ahadith. No religious sanctity attached to terrorist designs into India. Now again, everything just, you know, you don't like just attach the word terrorist to it. You know, I'm a terrorist, you're a terrorist, we're all terrorists, right? If, if we talk about certain verses of the Quran that relate to jihad, if we talk about anything that talks about Muslim self-determination, if we talk about khilafah, you are a terrorist. Uh, if you talk about Muslims standing on their own feet, having their own economy, you're a terrorist. Just, you know, it's just, it's just a scapegoat for everything. We all understand that. Okay. Now let us look at... Uh, <clears throat> we won't uh, look at this yet. Um, the thing is that Imam Ibn Kathir, uh, may Allah have mercy upon him, he uh, actually, um, maybe this is a better place to talk about this. Uh, Imam Ibn Kathir mentioned an apology, which is he's, he said basically, look, the history that he was writing, you know, Nihayah wa Bidayah, right? He quotes this hadith and then he mentions Muhammad bin Qasim. But he also mentions that, you know, due to lack of resources, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have all the information. Okay? And so, um, so Imam Ibn Kathir mentions an apology at a place at a place for not covering these areas, particularly he covered n almost nothing about Spain and his information in some cases were wrong. And this is just, and so people are taking Imam Nikathir's quotes in Bidayah uh, uh, or Nihaya or Nihaya, as some people like to say it, uh, and using that as a way to say, look, look, this already, this jihad already happened. Uh, we don't need to create a crisis with India. Okay, so this is, one thing that's going on and uh and so in that regard uh uh what appears to be the case i'm just reading this from here from the apparent meaning of the hadith of thoban of the allah one it if it if it is sahih and it is sahih that the conquest of india referred to will occur at the end time meaning not at the time of muhammad bin qasim or any of the other conquerors that came close to India before. And a time close to the descent of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Because as soon as Ghazwatul Hind is finished, what will happen? As soon as Ghazwatul Hind is finished, the army will hear about the coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So, and, and I'll quote that hadith when, when it comes. Not at a time that was close to Mu'awiyah radiallahu anh. Okay? So, Muslims invaded India at the time of Muawiyah. They didn't really invade. They went towards Sindh. Really, they didn't really get into. They went into Sindh, but that's another point. But I'm just trying to make the point that the Hadith is very, very, very clear that these events take the event of this of Ghazwat al Hind takes place close to. Basically, it overlaps with the coming of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay, and so the event of Khorasan happens before. The event of Khorasan happens before the coming of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and before Ghazwatul Hind, which I will talk about in, in a little bit. So, what are we looking at? <clears throat> I just have an English translation of some of the narrations that I want to talk about. I will be going over the Arabic and the original text of all of these things of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, as time goes by, inshallah. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh, he records in this ummah, the troops would be headed towards Sindh and Hind. So there's a ghazwa for Sindh and a ghazwa for Hind. Even though the word ghazwa is, doesn't come for Sindh. The word ghazwa comes for Hind. Okay. This hadith is reprodu re reproduced at least 19 subsequent works of Islamic scholars. Uh, so you have, you know, everyone from Imam Bukhari mentioning this in his tarikh, not in his sahih. Okay, 
And the second hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, definitely some of your troops will fight a war with Hind. Allah will grant success to those warriors, and as far as they as far as they would bring their kings by dragging them in chains, Allah would forgive those warriors whose Muslims would return, and they would find Isa alayhi uh, salam in Sham in Syria. Okay, this hadith is reflected in two of the famous classical works. Okay, so I'm first giving this to you in English, and then. Uh, Sorban again records uh, the two famous traditions and you should know this if you're interested in Islamic eschatology particularly from the perspective of Islamic tradition and classical Islamic works the two biggest narrators of these events of Ghazwatul Hind particularly where the word uh, Sind is also used is Sorban and Abu Huraira as you know Abu Huraira is the most He's repeated the most hadith, so he also has this in there. And so, Ban radiallahu anh has this hadith and another hadith that's very interesting on the same subject, which I'm not going to go into today. Two groups amongst my ummah community would be such whom Allah freed from fire. One group would attack India and the other would be those that accompany Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. This hadith has been reproduced at least in two works of later Islamic scholars. Okay. Uh, and this includes Imam Sayyuti and also Tarikhul Bukhari. Okay. Then you have Kaab radiallahu anh. This is a very interesting hadith. A king of Jerusalem. Now, who will be the king of Jerusalem? This will be the Mahdi. Okay. Would make warriors move onwards to Hindustan. The warriors would destroy the lands of Hind, would seize their treasures. Their king would use those treasures for the adornment of Jerusalem. Now another narration says a king would send warriors to Hindustan and Sindh. Both of these words are used. Now there are different opinions. Some people say, some scholars have said, that Sindh and Hind were used as one phenomenon, as one place. Other scholars said no, Sindh and Hind were actually two different entities that are being talked about. That's why some hadiths mention only Hind and some mention Sindh with Hind. <clears throat> Just so that you're clear. Uh, so, the warriors would destroy the land of Hind, would seize its treasures. Their king would use the, those treasures for the adornment of Jerusalem. Meaning, somebody's already in charge of Jerusalem and it's a, a, a Muslim. Okay? That troop would bring the Indian kings in front of the king of Jerusalem, meaning the Mahdi. His warriors, his warriors by king's order, would conquer all areas between east and west. And would stay in Hindustan till the appearance of the Jad. Okay, and so then from him, from there, those armies will move towards the Jal. Imam Bukhari's teacher, Naim bin Hamad, who wrote the famous Kitab al Fitan, he has recorded this hadith. The hadith related uh, by Saf, uh, Safwan some of my people will fight Hindustan. Allah would grant them success. And so, why am I mentioning this? This is not just any random battle with India. Okay, this is going to be a battle right before it, the Mahdi will already be there. He will have sent this army to India. And as soon as that battle is done, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam would have been uh, already present. So, some uh, people of my ummah will fight with Hindustan. Allah will grant them success. Uh, even if they find the ki Indian kings being trapped in fetters, they would do this, they would put them in fetters. Allah would forgive those warriors when they would move towards Syria and would find Isa wasalam, there. So these are the authentic narrations about the, the timing of when Ghazwatul Hind would happen. Okay, now in the Sasita we have these ahadith, I'm not going to go over the Arabic right now, but these are, this is just to show you, uh, this is to show you this point. A say hadith by muhaddisin is five narrations. And I'm showing you five different narrations in the original Arabic right over here on this issue of, because I think there's going to be a big movement to now de, uh, to, to, to uh, there will be a movement to say, no, these hadiths are weak. And I already see this happening from different places, especially from uh, the, the, Instructions are already there from the Western Institute, the think tanks, to do that. Okay. Um, I don't know why this happened. Okay, so now. Oh, let's go to this. 
this hadith is in Tirmizi. Takhruju min khurasani raya'tu sud. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that from Khurasan, black flags will come out. La yurudduha shay'un hatta, nothing will cause them to go back. Hatta until, tunsibul aliyah, until they come to aliyah, until they come to Jerusalem. Now, there can be a difference of opinion on what is aliyah also, but majority of the scholars say it's Jerusalem. These are all the traditions of the Prophet. Again, five traditions of the Prophet ﷺ regarding Khurasan. So how will it be? Khurasan is going to go to Jerusalem. okay, And from Jerusalem, the armies will go to India. And from Jerusalem, the armies will go to Sindh. So keep this in mind. So the armies will start from Khurasan, join the Mahdi. And then when Mahdi will be in Jerusalem, Mahdi will see that they need to fortify and make strong the army of Sindh, which is Pakistan. So the army of will go they will go to Sindh, recapture the lands taken by India by that time, which I will talk about in a second, and then conquer India, China, all of this area, which I will talk about. And then by the time that they are and while they're doing this, now in this process there will be the reconquering of Turkey also. So uh, what will happen is the army will divide into two once Isa alayhi salatu wasalam comes. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will remain in Jerusalem and the army of Mahdi will go and conquer these lands in the east. Constantinople would have been reconquered by the Muslims uh, as one of the first steps. So uh, Mahdi will come, he will bring justice to Arabia and then either he, he, he will go towards Constantinople, then from there he will go to Syria. While this, and, and, and then as he gets to uh, Jerusalem and conquers Jerusalem, then he, see, then he sends an army to Sindh to, to re-fortify Pakistan or this area of Khorasan. The, if Pakistan, in, the, one of the, uh, the things that will happen, I'll talk about this. But uh, there will, um, so there are many, many traditions of the Prophet ﷺ talking about Khurasan. Yes, some of them are weak, but some of them are authentic too. So, uh, Naim bin Hamad on a chain of transmission on the authority of Zuhari, uh, Zuhari says the black flags will come from the east, led by mighty men with long hair and beards. Their surnames, sur surnames are taken from the names of their homes. Meaning their last names, their surnames will be like, if they're from Multan, Multani. This is very, you know, their last names will be based upon a place that they live. Okay? Uh, now, uh, Buraida radiallahu anh says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, there will be many armies after me. You must join the ones that come from the direction of Khurasan. Uh, Thoban radiallahu anh, again he narrates, if you see black flags coming from Khurasan, go to them immediately, even if you must crawl over ice, because indeed amongst them is the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Mahdi, depending upon, there's different narrations on that. <coughs> and Thoban radiallahu anh, qala idha ra'aytum ra'ya'tu sud, Thoban radiallahu anh says, when you see the black flags, uh, that will come out from the direction of Khurasan, come to it. Even if you have to crawl, in it is the Khalifa of Allah, Mahdi. You know, if you see here, has al hadith has sahih ala shart al shaykhin. This hadith is sahih by the conditions of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. This hadith is that strong. Okay. If you see black banners coming from Khorasan, join that army even if you have to crawl over ice. No power will be able to stop them and they will finally reach Baytul Maqdis where they will in, uh, erect their flags. Now, how will armies come from Khorasan? What will be the situation of Iran? I'm going to say it very quickly but describe it in more detail later somewhere else somewhere else there will be a war with iran because of that 
uh, Iran will be in a difficult situation. There will be a war with Pakistan and India, and many of the areas of Pakistan would probably be taken by India. The whole Muslim world will be pushed towards this area of Khorasan. The Pakistani military and Afghanistan, the Taliban that are beginning to now take over again, so they will be kind of like in an, in an alliance. And then, because the situation will be dire, Iran down, Pakistan in a difficult situation, so that dire situation will create this new movement that will come out from it. Over here I want to point out Ni'matullah Shah, one of the dreams that he had, which is what I'm pointing towards. Because why will the Mahdi send an army to Sindh? Meaning, this is, a, this is now, this is like in the balance, you could say. He may send the army to this Sindh to fortify his army through the army of Pakistan, or to conquer, reconquer the lands that were taken by India. What will be the history? Allah knows. But it's in the balance. It depends upon the attitude of the Muslims of Pakistan, the Muslims of India, the Muslims of that region. How they behave will depend upon what the situation will be. Right? So Ni'matullah Shah says, Pakistan will all lose Punjab, Kashmir, and some parts of K KPK. So if that happens, if his dream comes true, and 80% of his, his writings have already come true, Ni'matullah Shah, if you study him. But we don't rely on this dreams 100%, but you know, since 80% of his dreams have come true, and since the Hadiths also support the fact that Mahdi will send an army to Sindh, which I will talk about uh, in, in more detail. So it is possible that Pakistan may have lost some traction against India. But if that happens, I want people to know, don't lose heart. Because that's not the that's not Ghazwatul Hind yet. Okay? So now let's look at some of the other narrations of the Prophet ﷺ in the Sahasitta, in the six books of authentic hadith. There are two groups of my ummah whom Allah will free from fire. We talked about this. Um, the one I want to talk about is the one named bin Hamad, the teacher of Imam Bukhari quotes, this ummah, in this ummah the troops would be headed towards Sindh and Hind. And another hadith, which I quoted in my other videos, uh, it these armies will go from Jerusalem to Sindh and from Jerusalem to Hind. And this is why in the other say hadith you'll find the king of like over here you find uh, <clears throat> that a group of you will conquer India Allah will open for you India and they will come with its king uh, chained Allah will forgive those warriors and when they return Isa alayhi will be there now we know Mahdi will be there before Isa alayhi the next hadith a king of Jerusalem in Ibayt al maqdis would would make warriors move towards Hindustan and another narration towards Sindh and Hind. So this is what I'm referring to. The warriors will destroy the lands of Hind, would seize its treasures, and the king would use those treasures for the door of Jerusalem. And another narration for decorating the uh, Jerusalem. His warriors, and that's kind of like obvious because by that time, after the Malhama and everything that would happen, uh, there would be a need for rebuilding these cities that had been destroyed by people that were occupying these lands. So here are some of the other narrations that have to do with the same issue. So I'm just going to move on right now. In this Ummah, the troops, okay, the troops would be headed towards Sin and Hind. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. My Ummah, the troops would to head towards Sin and Hind again. Um, the land of Sindh, now which, what is the land of Sindh? What is the definition of the land of Sindh? So I want to deal with that just very quickly. I'm not going to read the Arabic, I'm just going to read the English. The Arabic is there for you to see, okay? The land of Sindh is the land which is surrounded by River Indus. So you have the Indus River in Pakistan, okay? So that whole area, the area before Indus is Khorasan. Behind the mountains of Iran and before the river of Sindh, uh, Indus, before the river of Indus, this is Khorasan. And after the Indus river, and what comes it of, of, of it up till uh, India, this is Sindh. This area was known as Sindh. The land of Sindh is the land which is surrounded by river, river Indus, which was formerly known as Sindh. This river originates in the heights of Sindh and its mountains from the region of Kashmir, and merges 
in the Sea of Sin in the Indian Ocean. So it's actually not just the province of Pakistan, it's that whole area. Okay? And you know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Sin won't be destroyed except by Hind. And India won't be destroyed except by China. So the, these events are going to take place. Okay? Now, now Ghazwa to Hind, people say Ghazwa is that place or that battle in which the Prophet takes uh, himself. And so why do these hadiths, they use the word Ghazwa, this is obviously wrong, they're not authentic. I wanted to bring out an Arabic dictionary. Okay? Yes, Ghazwa is generally in, in Islamic tradition a battle in which the Prophet ﷺ participated in. But as a linguist, meaning the word Ghazwa was there before the Prophet, right? The word Ghazwa was there before the Prophet, but then it became used in a specific way. I'll give you another example in the Hadith literature. For example, the word Salah, the word Salah meant Dua. And in the Hadith literature, the word Salah is used as Dua, because that's what the language meant. When Islam came, it changed that word to mean a specific type of Dua, which is Fatiha and re reading Salah. But Salah means Dua. In the same way, Ghazwa, if you hear, uh, if you read uh, where it says, uh, signifies um, it, it is applied to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, but I also want to show you here um, a, it is a it is an, a battle engagement where you go one time with full strength Ghazwa is a big battle okay where you go with one time and uh, with uh, one time with full strength so let me just see if I can find that here signify this originally um act of warring plundering expedition um but the specific meaning that i wanted to show was where it is a one-time strong war uh maybe i'll show that to you at another time but that meaning does exist uh, in 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 the language um so uh, <clears throat> all right so let us move on and i'll show that at another time um, yeah, okay. So now, I heard Imam Bakr, so this person from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Bakr Rahmatullah Alayhi, and the Sunnis don't deny the Imams, uh, the people of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we respect them. We just don't single them out as the only important ones. The family, if somebody's from the family of the Prophet, we have absolutely no problem as Sunnis to respect them and to honor them as members of the Prophet Sallallahu family. Um, I heard Imam Bakr saying that a time will come when from the progeny of the Prophet Sallallahu he will have a sword and he will uh, unsheath uh, his sword and Allah will conquer Rome, China, Turkestan, this whole, you know, Constantinople will be conquered. Daylam, Sindh, Hind, Kabul, Sham, and Khazar. This whole area will be conquered by the Mahdi, even according to the Shia sources. So now, what will, uh, it, Iran's going to be an interesting case when we study that, okay? Because the question is what happens with Iran and what happens with the Shias in Iran in, in the long term. <coughs> so um yeah so i just want to so so what did we study okay we studied number one the destiny of pakistan is in the balance if pakistan does good then the army is going to sin doesn't mean that they have to reconquer sin even though the hadith is there uh, that are that are pointing towards the fact that an army would go towards sin and recapture the muslim lands but if Sindh is taken over, a certain part of Pakistan is taken over by India, then that forces an, a stronger alliance between Afghanistan, Iran, and Pakistan, and the armies would come out from there to help the Mahdi when he will be in the in Arabia when Arabia would fall. Um, and then the uh, so so this is very important. And the other thing is this is going to happen. These events are going to happen very very close to the time of the coming of Isa alayhi salatu They're not going to be any war that happens today or tomorrow. 
even though there may be wars between Pakistan and India now that may have positive or negative results, but there will be a war at the end. Uh, and so the, they will go from Khorasan to Elia, to Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem, he will send the armies towards Hind, and according to another narration, Hind and Sind. Okay? So this is the framework I want you to keep in mind. Now, we have to keep our research going, our mind open, our thoughts clear. Don't get emotionally attached to one idea or the other because nothing goes as humans plan. Nothing goes as humans think. Always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of everything ultimately, right? What we are interested in is ultimately in two things. Number one, uh, these are signs of the Day of Judgment. So the first thing is our own salvation for the Day of Judgment. And the second is is to re to re see to a second renaissance a second rise of the ummah uh, where islam becomes an example to the world of what is justice really like because whole humanity will be suffering in these times to come in these tar times of manufactured wars so and we look forward to these things so that we can know what to do to save ourselves which is another subject in itself <coughs> so I'll end with this Jazakumullah khairan please like and subscribe and share okay assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas Jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi I'm